Hello everyone. Today we have a very exciting paper called Emerging Properties in Self-Supervised Vision Transformer. So far in this series, we have covered various forms of vision transformers, but this video is the first method that uses self-supervised training on VIT. And as we'll see, self-supervised training of VITs give us some unexpected advantages. So let's dive in and see how this works. This paper proposes a method called Dino, which is a fully self-supervised framework applicable to both VITs as well as CNNs. Besides the simplified approach proposed by the paper for self-supervised learning, they also investigated the features that are obtained from the pre-trained models and observed that two properties come with these self-supervised VITs. The first property is that features from a self-supervised VIT contain very useful semantic layouts of the scene as shown in this figure. And the second property is that these features work great with KNNs. Before we discuss Dino methodology, let's clarify these two related concepts in the literature, self-training versus knowledge distillation. Self-training in machine learning is a task where we are given a small set of label data and the goal is to learn features based on the initial label data set and improve their quality by incorporating a larger unlabeled set of data. Whereas knowledge distillation refers to the task of transferring learned features from one network, usually referred to as a teacher network, to another network called the student. In this context, there is a paper called Noisy Student, which actually leverages both of these, and after training on, a, the, on the label dataset, it then learns to propagate soft pseudo-labels to an unlabeled dataset, and then iteratively improve these pseudo-labels. There are several algorithms for self-supervised learning in the literature for vision. The first category of algorithms is instance classification, where each image is treated as a different class, and the objective is to learn to discriminate between each individual image. The drawback of this approach is that it does not scale with the number of images. The second approach is called Bootstrap Your Own Latent, or BYOL for short. This approach is a metric learning framework that works with uh, two networks, an online and a target network. It generates different views of the input image and trains the online network to match the output of the target network. The proposed Dino algorithm is also inspired by BYOL with some minor alterations. So because of that, we are going to cover BYOL first. BYOL uses two networks, an online network shown in the top branch and a target network shown in the bottom. The online network, uh, which is parameterized by theta, is composed of a backbone encoder F theta, followed by two heads sequentially, a projector G theta and a predictor Q theta. The target network is parameterized by zeta and also has an encoder F zeta, followed by just one head, which is a projector G zeta. The input to the online and target networks are different views that are generated from the same input image X. After feeding the different views of the input image to the online and target networks, we get Q theta of Z theta as the output of the online and Z prime zeta as the output of the target. These are two representations obtained from different views of the same image and therefore the goal is to match these representations. The loss function for the online network is essentially the mean squared error between the normalized representations obtained from the two networks as shown here. Then for updating the target network, we use this exponential moving average of the parameters of the student network as shown in this equation. Now that we have reviewed BYOL, we can move on to Dino framework, which is very similar to BYOL. It has two networks, a student parameterized with theta s and a teacher network parameterized with theta t. Then given an input image x, we generate different views of x called x prime and x double prime. We feed x prime to a student network and we get g theta s of x as output. And similarly, we feed 
view x double prime to the teacher network and get g theta t of x. We can then apply softmax function to convert these log its g theta s and g theta t to probabilities p s of x and p t of x as shown in these two equations. Here, tau s and tau t are the temperatures that control the sharpness of the softmax operation. The loss function for training the student is based on this cross entropy loss between the probabilities of the student and the teacher that are obtained from the same input image x. The exact form of this loss has more details which we will see next. So let's look at the details of the self-supervised learning with knowledge installation as proposed in Dino. Given input image x, we generate a set of views v that contain two global views x1g and x2g as well as multiple local views. The global views have higher resolution like 224 by 224 and they are made by crops that contain at least 50% or more of the input image. The local views are made with crops that contain less than 50% of the original image and they have lower resolution. We feed the global views to the teacher network and we feed the local views to the student. So this way the student has to generate representations from the local views that match with the representations of the global views from the teacher network. So we use this loss function that considers all pairwise combinations of the probabilities from global and local views to train the student network. The teacher network is also trained from scratch at the same time as the student network. So for this, we build the teacher network from the past iterations of the student and using this exponential moving average update rule. This way of training the teacher with momentum encoder gives us a mean teacher which has the ensembling and model averaging effect. And as a result, it achieves better performance than the student model. The student and teacher networks have the same exact architecture, including a backbone encoder and a projection head. For the backbone architecture, we can use either VIT or ResNet50 with the details shown in this table. And the projection head is composed of a three layer MLP followed by L2 normalization, and finally a weight normalized fully connected layer. So the final model can be represented mathematically as G theta equals H of F of X. Also note that the VIT model originally does not have a batch norm, so the authors also avoid using batch norm in the projection head. In such self-supervised settings that involves training two networks simultaneously, we should always be concerned about mode collapse and consider some techniques to avoid that. In Dino, the authors use centering and sharpening operations that have opposite effects of each other, and the combination of these two effectively prevent mode collapse. Now we can finally look at the experiments conducted in the Dino paper. For the training, the models are pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset without using the labels. For evaluation, there are two standard ways of evaluating SSL models, either using a linear evaluation or fine-tuning. But since both of these evaluations are sensitive to the hyperparameters, they also included KNN evaluation that has minimal hyperparameters. The results of the linear and KNN evaluations using different learning methods including supervised as well as various SSL methods are shown in this table. When using ResNet50 as the backbone, we can see that the performance of Dino is on par with SSL methods. This shows that Dino is applicable to standard CNN models. But using VIT model, we see that Dino is even better than other SSL models by at least 3 to 4%. Furthermore, as we mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are some emerging properties that come with the self-supervised VIT models. The first one is the nearest neighbor retrieval capability, which is important for applications like image retrieval and copy detection. For both of these applications, the authors have conducted experiments on relevant datasets like Oxford and Paris image retrieval dataset and the copy, copy days uh, dataset from INRIA, 
and the results shows that Dino has better performance than the supervised models. And the second property is that the features from self-supervised VIT contain very useful information related to the semantic layouts of the scene. On the left, you can see the self-attention maps, uh, which clearly contain semantic information of their inputs. These information are useful for weekly supervised semantic segmentation. Furthermore, the authors conducted experiments for video instance segmentation on Davis 2017 dataset, and without any fine-tuning, Dino is showing superior performance compared to other SSL methods. So that brings us to the end of this video, pre-training VIT models with Dino that is a self-supervised learning framework uh, with knowledge distillation. And two important properties emerge from the models trained with Dino. First, Dino models provide highly informative features that work well in KNN classification. And the second property is that Dino features contain semantic information. I hope you enjoyed this video, and in the next video we will cover the clip model from OpenAI. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.